as soon as 48 kill game against V1 broke records in the competitive Valorant scene, with 22 of those kills coming in overtime, which is what I'm going to focus on today. Talk about how he's able to get these shots, obviously the headshots, you guys all saw them, but I want to focus on today how he sets himself up for success, how his teammates set him up for success, and I think you guys will learn a lot about how to play Icebox as well. Now I'm going to start off talking about 100 Thieves defense, particularly of this A site and how soon as I'm involved in it. And then I'll circle back around to the offense and of course talk about that incredible clutch he had and a couple of other rounds as well. Now the first play we're going to see from 100 Thieves is one that is well thought out and has a nice couple of different layers to it. And you're going to see the first of it right here, where Ethan has obviously put the smoke down here at the end of the rope for Asuna to slide across into. At the same time that Hiko's shot his recon dart out at the beginning of the round to catch anyone trying to go aggressive in here towards this A lobby area, which Thief has done. He's been caught by the dart despite it getting destroyed. And it might look like he has a shot here, but he really doesn't because of how far back he is. You can see the angle here when I demonstrate it in the server. He's have to move a long way forward. And even then with the way that Ethan's smoke is positioned, I think it would be difficult to hit this shot and get in a position to really contest this. So it's really there for informational reasons, the recon dart. You can see that as soon as starts to get spammed up, so he moves that hair onto the rope before the blind comes through from Ethan. He gets that pick onto Thief and then as soon as able to get away, jumping over here to the left. Now, that's the second reason for this smoke that Ethan's put out is one, it's a getaway plan for Asuna. See how wide anyone in Penny's position would have to swing out here to catch him getting away. It's basically not possible without Penny just exposing himself to a thousand angles. So with that blind, Asuna pretty much has a free getaway where no one's going to catch him sliding across that rope and jumping to the left. Now from here, I want to pay attention to the fights that Asuna takes. Is one, he looks for him potentially chasing him up high in a position where Penny might be, like in these positions here, and when he sees nothing and hears the owl drones, he blinds down here and to his right. Um, makes sense, obviously, he wants to get his owl drone out, get any kind of information, a V1 resetting, are they speeding up after Asuna got that pick, because they did make a lot of noise here trying to spam his position. So one owl drone here from Hiko, and one owl drone in this position here from Effie's. Now, as these owl drones are coming through, you saw that blind down to the right, which is obviously going to get anyone trying to swing around that corner. But what ends up happening is Vandy's going to kill the owl drone. As soon as in a perfect position to trade off that potential kill, easy kill onto him there. And then once Whippy tries to lurk out here towards the B site and Nitro finds him, the round is pretty much over. Now, if we go back to the previous defensive round that 100 Thieves played, I think there's a bit of PTSD here for Asuna, that's why he used that Leer on the round we just looked at, because if you look at this right now, Hiko's going to send out his Owl Drone, it's going to spot these three players coming out the right hand side, Asuna and Ethan are going to peek the same player, Asuna dismisses away before Hiko goes out, and then he peeks out and finds Vanity, but by the time he makes a good play, Thief is already up here, he collects two, and from there the round's pretty much over. So let's talk quickly about this setup that 100 Thieves are running. It looks pretty self-explanatory in this particular area here, where you can see Ethan's in the position he's in. His job is just to look from where he is, you can see him right here on the map, or in, right in front of Asuna actually. His job, just to watch this angle across here, make sure no one's coming up this right-hand side. As soon as obviously got the left-hand side from here, and he goes here, ready to look support, he also spots towards middle from time to time. Now, the problem that goes on in this particular round is the fact that just the timing of the owl drone. We saw Asuna peek off that owl drone in the previous round, getting that kill on towards Vanity, and he wants to do the same thing here, but it kind of breaks the setup. So you can see the owl drone come out right now from Hiko, Asuna gets ready to swing, and he peeks right here. And what ends up happening is because Asuna is on this right-hand side a little bit quicker, and instead of trading off Ethan, he's essentially trading off the owl drone. So what ends up going down is they both kill Penny, and Ethan gets traded, because Asuna actually doesn't technically get a kill here. You can see... He gets the dismiss, but it's actually Ethan's kill. Now, ideally, you'd want this setup to work where Ethan would get the first one. So Ethan would kill Kenny right now, uh, Penny right now. Asuna would swing, be in the position he's in right now, and he would probably kill Effie's. In which case, you've gone two for one once Ethan gets traded, as opposed to just going one for one once Asuna goes for this dismiss. And that's basically just happened because of the timing of the hour drone, which is maybe why Asuna put that uh, blind down last round, just because he, he didn't like the way this one played out. He knows that it wasn't perfect. They dismiss away. You can see here on the map as well, there's Hiko going down. He get ready to peek off the right-hand side as well. So you can see how this, this setup would normally go down. You get contact of Ethan. Second contact would come from Asuna swinging up here. And then the third contact would come from Hiko coming from that CT area. So you get one, two, three contact on this right-hand side. And that's very difficult for V1 to deal with. Because of the timing of it, uh, those initial two players only go one for two. Ethan gets traded out straight away. And Asuna has to wait all the way until his two teammates have gone down to actually get his kill right there. And once that happened, we saw Thief get into that position. So that's how that kind of went down. A little bit unlucky on the timing with the Owl Drone, but you can see the setup they're running and how they're really focusing on this right-hand side entrance.
Now round 32 is going to be essentially the exact opposite, but you're going to still see them playing together very well on the A side. So here, a lot of noise coming out from V1, which makes the sooner very confident over here towards A. You can see him swing up there on the rafters. He just takes that, man. It's a straight 1v1 fight. That's a confidence thing. He's very happy to take those fights, and that's another reason he's doing so well. It's not always a setup. Sometimes it can just be straight hitting a nice shot. Now, here, we're going to see them reset and how they're going to play off this. And again, this time, we're going to see, not a sooner, but it's actually going to be... Um, Ethan playing off this our drone. So if you see here, he goes our drone's going in. Pause, look at the map right now. You can see right there, Ethan's in this position ready to peek off that. So you see one of them is always playing off this. And he goes our drone normally comes out once one of these A players gets contact, such as we saw when uh, Asuna went across, got spammed, got that kill early on. This time he's got a kill on towards Vanity. Both these times the our drone's coming out from Hiko to get that information. Is the whole team here? Or is it just one guy that was here kind of lurking on his own? So he's done that multiple times now. Um, has Hiko. So Ethan's going to take that peek off there, doesn't see anything, Hiko gets up and he ends up spotting out the Viper there. Now look at Ethan reposition on the map right now, he repositions to here behind this area and then he's going to just chill here, he's going to put a smoke here towards the entrance um, to block off Whippy and Thief and we're going to have a little bit of time where we're just chilling um, until V1 decide to go through this. And look at the reaction from 100 Thieves. There goes the Leah through there from Thief. Asuna puts um, his own one out to the left. But what also happened right now is we saw Ethan move and he's put a smoke a one way right above, which we're going to see in a second. And then we're going to see Ethan and Asuna peek up and down on top of each other. That makes the fight very difficult for V1. So they put these out. You're going to see the smoke on your screen now. They swing together. Ethan's right below Asuna this whole time. Penny gets the kill. Ethan should have probably got that one there uh, on towards Thief, but we're still in a 3v2, and you can see how those A, a players are playing together. Hiko also put his um, server dart out there to the left at the same time that we saw Asuna using his blind. So you can really see 100 Thieves. They always make sure, all right, we're going to attack the right-hand side. We're going to attack the left-hand side. We're going to fight it together. It's not, oh, mate, you got left. I got right. Good luck. It's always playing together and making sure they're demolishing this attack. We've talked about how Asuna benefits a bit from Ethan Smokes, his blinds, the Owl Drone coming out from Hiko, um, but I want to talk about how he plays this round out very intelligently for the man advantage, winning his fights early on as well, which is something Asuna just does. Obviously everything I've talked about, if you're missing all your shots, doesn't really matter that much. Um, we're going to see him do a great job of letting his team rotate in here. So obviously 100 Thieves know that the jet in Penny is up on top there. Steel gets taken out. The blind that comes through right there from Ethan is just a second too late. But as soon as he wants to level this out, he's been feeling it this game. You guys all know that. He's just going to straight get up here and fight Penny with the information he has. Just takes him out. Nice little shot there. Tries to jump up and down here. Uh, get as much health as possible, but only gets himself back up to a total of 99. Uh, before rotating back out here towards A to play with Hiko. He got a lot of information there with that kill. Saw them. Heard them running away. And look at Ethan on the map. He's also got a lot of info. So again, we're going to see Asuna just win another duel. Hiko confidently peeking on top, as you're seeing on your screen right now. And as he gets contact, it's actually going to be a few seconds past. So he's not really peeking with him. Asuna is going to take out Vanity before tucking himself in this corner. He's going to do a great job of staying alive with Hiko being annoying. You saw him pull out the shuck darts here. And essentially what's going to happen is Asuna's not going to peek. He's going to let himself get down to 38. And he's going to hold that angle you saw right there. And we're going to end up in a position kind of like what we're seeing right now. And what Asuna's done is he's created such an annoying scenario for V1. It's so difficult for them to get rid of him. You can't wall bang this position he's in. And if you want to push and clear that out, you have to expose yourself to so many angles. You're so committed in here that you can see what's going to happen actually from Thesis' point of view is if you get this far in, the players in Hiko and the player in Nitro rotating in are going to be so easily able to swing and just kill you in a compromised and pretty weak position really because you've had to commit so far to clear out Asuna. What actually ends up happening is both the Sova and uh, Thief here are focusing on Asuna. You're going to see Hiko get a free kill there onto Effies. And then as Thief is trying to push in, look, Asuna's going to peek him. But what was going on at that timing is the timing when Asuna peaked was when Nitro arrived. And I don't know if this was a coincidence, but it's a pretty decent one. Is it such a smaller cone of an angle that Asuna has to peek once Nitro arrives? But it also could have just been off sound cues. But he completely deletes Thief. And from there, the round's pretty much over. And actually a good double peek here from Hiko and Asuna, but... That's just a nuts transfer from Whippy, to be honest, to take out Hiko. Um, but from that point of view, a bit low on time and seemed to be a bit of a theme for V1 in a couple of these rounds. So we're back tied out at 17 apiece with another incredible hold from Asuna.
So some great defensive rounds from Asuna, playing off his teammates' utility, the smokes and the flashes from Ethan, the owl drone from Hiko, playing well for time for his team to rotate. And we're going to move on to the offensive side and talk about what he did there as this duelist of Reyna. Now, first round here is going to be a B split from Hundred Thieves. They're going to use the Reyna Leers to get through here, basically just as flashes, to cross these two choke points and get to a position where they can really pincer this B bomb site. And we're going to see Asuna get his first kill right there onto Penny. So... From this situation here, now Thief is in a really sticky situation because he's basically stuck here. He's got Asuna and Steel on this side of him and he's got Nitro on this side of him. And he has to basically just try and commit to a fight and hope he kills the people that peek him first. He's going to commit to Nitro here and actually get the kill before we see Asuna do a really good job of just committing to take him out. So he does take out Nitro, props to him, before as all these other kills go down, you might want to follow um, Asuna on the minimap, you don't have to look at the action going down. Asuna is going to eventually find that kill there onto Thief. And he's going to be very, very quick in this 1v2 clutch. And this is something a lot of people suffer from, um, is they're not decisive enough in these clutches. Asuna doesn't want to try and finesse this, play some kind of mind games, like what you might see if maybe Steel was clutching or someone like that. Is he just goes straight for his strengths, which is these headshots, and knowing that the fact that he has Rainer to dismiss, he straight away knows I'm going towards A, there was no mucking about, and he's going to get over here and play out this clutch. And again, he's going to play to his strengths, which are just his raw aim, and also the agent strength, which is Asuna or Reyna can take a duel, dismiss, reset, and take another 1v1, not playing 1v2, which is V1. I've actually done a really good job of keeping in this particular round. So instantly kills Effie, dismiss away, can reset the fight into another 1v1, and just straight wins that as well. Um, as I was pointing to, V1 actually played this really well. I love how they regrouped here in middle together, making sure that if Asuna did take a fight, it was going to potentially be 1v2, but obviously Reyna makes that very difficult. And the other attacker round that Asuna had a lot of impact on was this one here, where actually seven of his 10 kills um, from attacking rounds came from these two rounds I'm going to show you. And this one's just going to be straight out confidence. He's going to trade uh, this aggressive play coming out from Thief, actually taking out the op first. So you can see him going to peek. Penny's gone down. Now this man's super confident. He's pushing the whole time. He takes out Thief. And then we're going to see him jump up here and get really aggressive, even in the man advantage situation. Now, one reason that he might be doing this, is you can see on the map right here, there is actually dart here, silver dart from Eco, which has just been sitting here the entire time. We saw Vanity get lit up by it a couple of times. So maybe he's just trying to capitalize off that, get really aggressive, really confident in the angles he's going to be taking because probably not necessarily the 4v3, but he's going to do it anyway. And you can see he's going to, he's going to catch Vanity trying to come through and take that out. Dismisses, uses his ult, but eventually does get taken out by Whippy, but a free trade there from Steel. And from that point, they've got the advantage going on to the round and this man's going to carry this through to get a triple kill to close out the final round he starts off fighting aggressively albeit with ethan's smoke before his last two fights are just straight off feeling it it seems like he gets a bit of information on the fights he can take and he just locks them out takes matters into his own hands and closes v1 out and snags the first round for 100 thieves but with that being said guys if you enjoy this kind of content make sure to like and subscribe and i'll catch you all in the next video